Hi, I'm Larry and welcome to my studio. Today's video is going to be a, the start of a watercolor project. And so if you're interested in following along, you can go to my blog spot that you'll see at the bottom of this and at the end of the video. And you'll find an, an equipment list in the sidebar and a link to getting the, uh, the reference photo and a drawing if you need it. So I'll be right back and I'll get started. Thank you for watching. Before we get started, I want to go over some pretty basic but important things about watercolor. Now I know that if you're a struggling artist or someone who's wanting to know what you need to get, and you see on my, my equipment list, I tell you about 140 pound watercolor paper. And you think, oh, that's expensive. That's the one place you don't want to go cheap. You can buy student grade paints and you can buy cheaper brushes and things like that. We, we can paint with our hands if we need to. But it's the paper that is the most important. And some of the paper isn't all that expensive. If you buy a tablet and it's a, a student grade, it'll still say 140 pound. And it's a, it's a thick paper. It's made with cotton, so it's archival, um, and it's designed specifically for watercolor. If you try to use like drawing paper or something like that, you're not going to be happy with your results. So go cheap in other areas, but not in your paper. You know, find a good 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. Hot press is a little uh, shinier, it doesn't absorb the paint the same way. Um, the cold press is kind of standard for uh, watercolorists. So that's that's what you want to do is find find a good a good watercolor paper to start out with. Now I also want to go over what we're going to be painting. This is. This is a photograph I took a few years ago down at the beach and I call this turn, turn, turn. And one of the things that I do when I'm, when I'm teaching my regular classes, ordinarily if it's for me, I will take the time to draw. But a lot of people, they either don't draw what you need to learn to do or they, they just want to save time like me. So I have, this is tracing paper, and I put this up, I don't have a light box big enough, so I put this up on my sliding glass doors in the back to use that like a poor man's uh, light box, and then I put the tracing paper over it, and, and I trace my drawing. This is really all you need to do. But I do want to make sure that you understand when you're doing this and you're copying somebody else's work. Remember, you are copying somebody else's work. They went to the trouble to, to take the photograph, to make the drawing, and teach you how to paint it. So always give them credit. And you might, if you're thinking of putting it in a, a some kind of a, a, a like a show or something, check with the rules because a lot of times they will not allow allow you to use somebody else's work unless you have specific permission from the, the artist or the photographer. Also I wanted to go over over the supports that I use. This is this is a large one. I've got it it's a little bit larger than than the painting I'm going to be doing. But these you get at at the, the home improvement stores where they have have glass and molding. These are just acrylic boards. This is an 8x10. This is a 11x14. Yeah, just about 11x14. Um, this is a 16x20. You want something that's just a little bit bigger than the paper that you're using so you can tape, tape it down. But these are lightweight. They're durable and they, they give your, your paper support. So when I, 
when I do my my drawing, let me get this back again. When I do my drawing, what I do is I put it in my computer, I scan it into my computer, and then I have a program that allows me to enlarge it as big as I need to enlarge it. Uh, you'll find in, in the uh, sidebar of my blog spot, there's a, a list of Larry's links, and there's a couple of, of links there. One's Poster 8 for PC, and the other is a Poster Razor or Razor Poster for uh, uh, Macs and things like that, that will allow you to uh, make enlargements. So that's what this is. And when it gets printed out, it's printed out in, in just plain sheets of paper like a super simple puzzle. It has an overlap so you can make sure it's it's you know lined up correctly. And then what I do is that I take my this is just graphite paper and I put it underneath and I trace over the outside edges of my drawing to, to transfer it onto my paper. Now it's going to look a little bit strange when I flip this and I'll explain that here too. Okay, so I've transferred my, my drawing onto my paper. Now what this is, this is called masking fluid. Um, it's a, this is just a, a blue base. Uh, ordinarily when I'm working on my own I will use a clear. It comes with different colors such as a weird orange and a yellow. I do not recommend those. I have had trouble with them staining my paper after all of that work. This, this blue, this is, this is Peebo drawing gum. Um, works fine, but I do want to, to warn you if you have any uh, latex allergies, you don't want to use this because this is made with latex. But uh, when I come back here in a minute, I want to get this set up uh, again. Just by, by putting this, this drawing gum or, or masking fluid on here, it dries so that you can paint right over it and not worry about going over your white. Traditionally white is the white of the paper. So I'm going to take a break here and get myself rearranged so that I can show you how to apply this and then we'll, we'll get started on doing the background for this. So I'll be right back. Alright, if you've never done anything with masking fluid before, there are ways to put it on. Um, some instructors will say, oh, you can use your best brushes, and okay, if you've got money to throw away, that's one thing. This is just a cheap brush that came with some kids' paints. Um, Inevitably, what will happen if you're using your good brushes is you'll be right in the middle of this and the phone will ring. And you'll set this down and get talking, come back a half hour later, and then you've got an eraser on the end. So um, it's just better if you have a, a cheap brush or an old brush that you don't care about. And what you do is first wet your brush, and then this is just a piece of soap. This is just a, this thing's probably, oh, 15, 20 years old at this point in time. It's just an old piece of soap. You can use the soap that you get from uh, travel soaps or something. You want to make sure it doesn't have any uh, face cream or anything in it. You don't want anything with oil. Uh, but you, you know, the soap will protect the, the bristles. So you just kind of roll it around rub it pretty good and then just take a, a paper towel and just wipe the the excess soap off then you want to dip it into your your masking fluid get a bunch on 
And then just paint the areas that you don't want to paint when you get to your watercolor. You know, if, if you get out of the lines or get it someplace that you didn't want it or heaven forbid you, you drop it or something happens, you know, so that you have a big blot on your paper, don't worry about that. Just let it dry and it will peel right off when it's dry. I'm not going to cover all of the birds because I can, I can paint around it enough that I'm not going to get it into the white area. Traditionally, white in watercolor is the white of the paper. Um, I don't usually use gouache or acrylic on my watercolor, although I will occasionally if I forget and paint over something that I plan to have white. Now the legs actually don't care because they're going to be be much darker. But just just to show you what I'm doing here. But this takes about 15-20 oh, minutes to dry. So when I get this done, I will take a break and let it dry and come back. And we'll probably get the first washes on. For this video, I've decided I need to break these up into shorter videos and plan them a little bit better. So there will be several segments to this project. So just one little touch here. Oh, and by the way, you can put this over existing watercolor. It will take up a little bit of the color, but not so much as you will notice. So I'm done here. It's not pretty, but this is going to protect all of this area so that when I paint, I don't have to be so careful going around the edges. So give me a minute, and I will be right back. Uh, well, for me, it's going to be about 15 minutes. For you, it be just a second. Hang in there. Okay, I'm back, and this is all dry now. All of this stuff, it, it will always feel a little bit tacky. If you see some of the spots that are a little bit thicker, you may want to, you know, touch them. Part of it will be lighter if it's still wet, but for the most part, all of this is dry. Now, I wanted to show you up here, this, you know, in case you had a drop or something got someplace where you didn't, didn't want it, um, just just let it dry because it peels right off. You can peel it off with your your finger, or you can take a piece of this is just my blue masking tape or regular masking tape will work. And then you turn the sticky side out like that, and then just just kind of drag it across. If you have large areas to to do, you may want to try something like this because otherwise you're, you'll rub your finger raw. Or you can use an eraser. You, an eraser will work. And last but not least in my little bag of tricks, this is called a rubber cement pickup. These you should find at the uh, in your art store, but if you can't find them there, you might also look in an office supply store where they keep the rubber cement because that's what this was designed for. It's just kind of this little weird thing, but it just really picks up the rubber cement. So that's how you get that off. You don't have to worry about it. I mean, one of the few things in watercolor you don't have to worry about. Um, is that. And I also want to mention that after you're done putting on your masking fluid, be sure to rinse your brush out really good and work your fingers down into the 
bristles it'll uh, keep your brushes good for a long time like I said this is just a cheap brush but I've probably had this for 30 years fortunately um, when you're working with a cheap brush the phone doesn't ring so just wanted to mention that so now what I want to do is now that I have this protected I want to do this background and to, to do that, I'm going to start here. Hold on just a second. I'm going to start. I've got a, a clock here. So I know when to stop. All right. What I want to do is, is that this is just water. This is, this is my two inch, my two inch brush. I can just paint right over over that that masking that's why I put it down there doesn't hurt it's just basically rubber but I, I don't have to I don't have to worry about getting that wet because I'm gonna try to avoid painting there when I get get to that part now I don't always use masking fluid I just doing it uh, this time because I do have a big area to cover and I want to get it done fast you can carefully go around your you know your subject if you don't want them to have any of that paint or water um, but having the masking fluid there is is just uh, easier so now I'm going to come down I've already and I'll show you what I've got here this is my 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 palette and I've come in and I've sprayed sprayed my paints before I started doing this so they're ready to go and yes it's a dirty palette I work with a dirty palette I'm just going to I just sprayed that that blue area and this is my burnt sienna same brush this is a, a two inch angled watercolor brush and I'm just going to mix that burnt sienna and the mud that was on my my palette and it was just some leftover blues and purples to that I think I'll add just a little touch of this is cadmium yellow just picked up some more water I'm going to be doing this in washes so this first this first wash is not going to be real dark once it dries remember that watercolor dries lighter so I'm just going to start up here at the top with this color I can paint right over these areas. I will have to watch any drips that want to go across that. That barrier I've put up. And remember not to get down into the bird. But I just, this is just almost like painting a wall right here. This is one of the few times you can kind of get away with it. Because the paper is wet, it will, it will run. If, if it looks like it's getting a little dry, I can add more water. These beginning stages are sometimes, I'm seeing some drips here, are sometimes the, the most fun because you're not really um, too concerned about
anything at this point in time. You're just getting the background in. This is just going to be a, a soft background. Paint right over the legs. Now I didn't have, like I said, I didn't have to paint the the legs with the, the masking fluid because they're going to be dark and they're going to be darker than than the background but it doesn't hurt anything to mask them out maybe keep the the final color a little bit cleaner but you can see how this kind of stops this barrier stops the paint as long as it doesn't get too too wet. Let's see, is that? I've got another light up here. I think I'll turn that off because it's causing a glare. Okay, so th that's kind of my, my background. Let's see, where it is? Ah. Okay, now, now here's something you can do while it's wet. This is just some rock salt that I put into a, a salt grinder and while this is still wet I can just put a little bit of salt or you can take regular table salt this is just a little bit bigger grain and then let it dry so I'm gonna stop here this has to dry and we'll be right back thank you okay now I've let this background dry and if you can see this pattern back here, that's what happens when you add the salt. Uh, there's a little bit of texture. Now, there are some purists that don't like salt. They think it's a gimmick. But if you use it correctly, it can do things that you cannot do any other way. And I like to use it when I'm doing like dirt or, or concrete or something like that that has a texture take you forever to do this little bit of a pattern but I'm, I'm gonna go back over part of this again I'm gonna leave this bottom part I'll bring this the picture back up you can see that bottom part is just a little bit uh, lighter than than the background and I'm gonna use the same color at least to start with but to that, I'm going to mix in some more of my ultramarine blue. So I'm going to take, this is my ultramarine right here. And I'm just going to pick some of that up, mix it in, make it just a little bit cooler. I'm going to move it back over so I can see it a little bit better for myself. but I'm just adding a little bit of water, a little bit more of the ultramarine blue and mixing it in with that kind of a muddy, muddy brown color. Now because this is watercolor, when I put the new layer down, this layer that you see here is going to influence it. Watercolor is transparent. So by putting another color on top of this, this color is going to make it into yet another color more of more of that that wet sand color again i'm going to just this time I'm, this is dry and i'm just going to add the 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 wet to the dry paper just paint right over that masking now i don't want to to keep messing with this, I just want to put the paint down and let it dry. Because some of that, that salt that I did before, that will kind of show through. And I'll probably do a little bit more salt when I get this layer down. Um, as I'm leaving, leaving this, I'm picking up water and 
pink. Water's just to keep it from getting too dark. And I'm going to paint around this. And don't make it a straight line. It's not a straight line. It's sand. So, so kind of make it an uneven line. Because this is down at the beach. People have been walking on it. Birds have been walking on it. It's got a lot of ups and downs to it. It's, it's uneven. Pick up a little more blue so it'll be a little bit different color. Come in here. Just paint this. Now again, I'm going to do something that's wet into wet. So what we did originally was wet into wet. And I'm going to take my burnt sienna back down in that muddy color. A little bit more blue and maybe even a touch of sap green. Just to kind of get this almost like a khaki color. And if you notice in the background here that there are the probably just drifts of, of sea kelp that have come in on the tides. And I'm just going to tap it into this wet. Now if it looks too dark, what I can do, I'm rinsing my brush. And I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of water where it may have dried a little quicker. I'm in my back porch and the door's open so there's a kind of a little nice breeze coming in. Just add little clumps of stuff back here. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything. This is too far away, out of focus. And last but not least, this is, I went and found my table salt. Just going to sprinkle some of that in here. You don't have to do this. You can also uh, take a brush or a toothbrush if you want. And this is just water and spritz it or pick up some color. This is just my burnt sienna and spritz it in there too. Watch it getting into the birds. It didn't do too much. So I'm going to stop this segment right here. And when we meet again on my next video, uh, we'll continue on with this. So if you want to follow along, go to my blog spot and you'll find the links for the picture and the reference material, also some other handy material that you want. So stay safe, call your friends, call your family. Remember we're all in this together and we will get through this. Thank you so much for watching.